We already sang about this twice today, about the star of Bethlehem. We're not going to preach about the star, but we'll read about this this morning. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Verse 3, When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, Thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. When Herod Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him. Verse 9. And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Um, Verse 13, when they were departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Um, verse 16, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, in Ramah there was a voice heard, uh, lamentation and weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. But when Herod was dead, that's enough reading. But when Herod was dead, I want to preach today on the days of Herod the king. You may be seated. In the days of Herod the king. Herod was a very wicked man. <clears throat> Matter of fact, they say that Herod, when he died, that he had set up mourners to march through the streets. You know, he ruling there in this Jewish land. The Jews uh, put a lot of emphasis on funerals and deaths and things like that. And they would mourn. Many times would have like 30-day uh, mourning time. And um, that was just their their way of doing it, their culture or their um, traditions. And uh, Herod was afraid that they would rejoice when he died, so he set up all these mourners that when he died, they would march to the streets and mourn, and actually people were so happy that he died, and he knew that. Herod um, had no intention of worshiping the Lord Jesus when he was born. You know what he, had, what he wanted to do? He thought he could do? He thought he could go and kill that baby. He told those wise men, when you find out where he is, you bring me word again, I want to go worship him. He was lying. We know that. He wanted to kill that baby because he was a king. Herod claimed that he didn't believe in God. Herod claimed that, you know, living for yourself, the lifestyle, he he didn't want nothing to do with God. But I want to look a little deeper in this. God, a man sent his son to be born in the days of Herod the king, and uh, Herod could have changed. 
Notice first off, the Bible says he was troubled. Why was he troubled? Amen. Why was Herod troubled? He was troubled because he knew this was the real Christ. Now I see people, they get under conviction they're troubled, but it ain't enough to change their life. I mean, if it's enough to trouble your life, why won't you really change, Herod? If it's enough for you to be troubled, if you're concerned about that little baby, amen, if you're concerned about, amen, if it's enough for you to get under conviction, how come it's not enough for you to change? The Bible says he was troubled. He knew it was the real Christ. He knew it was the way. Amen. Herod was a foolish man to not change his life. The last scripture I read was when, but when Herod was dead. The Bible says that he called the wise men or he gathered uh, all the chief priests and scribes together and demanded them where Christ should be born. You know where they found out where Christ could be born? Hold on, I'll get it. Right here. Amen. Well, if the word of God's not true, why do you believe in priests? Amen, Herod. If the word of God, if you don't want to live by the word of God, then why are you believing those priests? They're reading the same thing right out of that book. They said in Bethlehem of Judah. Herod believed the word of God. He knew it was true, but it wasn't enough to change him. There's people, they know the Word of God is true. They know the Bible's true. They know the power of God's true. But it ain't enough to change them. Amen. I'm preaching today on in the days of Herod the king. Do you look at how wicked this man was? Study history of how wicked he was. He had no regard for any life. Very evil man. Yet he believed the Bible. He didn't make it to heaven. There's people that believe the Bible. They know the Bible's true, but do they live it? Do they, do they, do we apply it to our life? The Bible said he heard, amen, they, they read to him, amen, from Malachi, where he said, amen, that there in that uh, minor prophet said, out of thee shall come a governor. Amen. Bethlehem is where it's going to be. The reason I know he believed the Bible is because he went to Bethlehem when after two years had passed and killed every baby from two years old and under. Now, he wouldn't have sent to Bethlehem. He would have just went anywhere. He went to Bethlehem, amen, and killed those children. He believed the Scripture was true, but he didn't believe it enough to change his life. The Bible says that he called them to him. He not only believed the written word of God, he believed their testimony. Well, I mean, what do you think about somebody living like that? And here come these wise men. All of them are goofy Christians. Those are goofy. You know, they, they believe in the Holy Ghost. They believe in prophecy. They believe in all that. He knew it was real. He could have faked it all he wanted to. He could have mocked it all he wanted to. He could have killed them done, but he knew it was real or he wouldn't have killed those children from two years old and under. There are people that know the power of God is real. There's people that know the touch of God is real. They know the Holy Ghost is real. They know that prophecy is real. But do they change their life? Do they quit living? Do they quit sinning? Do they quit? You know what Herod should have done? He should have listened to the... uh, to those wise men and said, I'm going to go worship him myself because he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. He is the Christ. The Bible said when he privately called, he didn't want nobody to know. He wanted to do it in secret. You'll be surprised at people. They don't want their friends to know, but they're secretly studying the Word. They're secretly looking up, amen, different sermons. Or they may put a tape in or a CD in or, amen, play something, you know, some audio preaching or or look up something online or something while nobody's watching. Amen. They don't want nobody to know. But they really wonder, is the Lord coming really as soon as like I feel He is? Amen. They're stirred in their heart. The Bible said he was troubled. Amen. That stirring. But is that stirring enough for them to change? Is that stirring enough for us to change our life? You think about the actions of Herod. 
privately. He didn't want nobody to know. Some people don't even want people to know they're going to church. They, want to, they, they would love to go if they could do it secretly. And uh, he privately called them to him. The Bible says he, the wise men inquired of them diligently. Listen to this. If you've got your Bible open. I'm not going to preach too long this morning. When Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently. What time did that star appear? When did that star? Herod knew there was something going on. But it wasn't enough to change him. Now I see people, they know this world is in a mess. They know that God is, amen, angry with the wicked. They know their life is on the wrong path. They know they're going to hell. But it's not enough to change. They might not admit it. Amen. Look at these actions. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's troubled. Troubled. You know, God will send conviction. There's something called Holy Ghost conviction. I've seen people that experienced it didn't know, didn't even have a clue what it was. And I've seen other people experience it. They knew exactly what was going on, and they tried to blame it on everything else. They was under conviction. Amen. They wanted to say it was this or that or the other, but the truth of the matter is, under conviction. You take a person under conviction, they're one of the most miserable persons people to be around. And God has a way of putting people under conviction while they're driving down the road. God can put somebody under conviction, amen, while they're rather right there in their house wrapping loose, uh, wrapping Christmas presents. God can put them under conviction, amen. Usually that's somebody that knows better. Amen. But you bring somebody in the house of God, amen, never been, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I've seen them, their knuckles turn white, they'll grip their fists so, so tight, they didn't even realize it. The Holy Ghost conviction, get a hold of somebody. Nervous, get up and go to the bathroom 15 times. Nobody's got to go to the bathroom 15 times in church. Unless they, you know, maybe on some kind of medication or something. And that ain't the case. I don't preach that long. I mean, you're talking about the kids all of a sudden. They're the kids, there ain't nothing wrong with the kid. But all of a sudden, you know. And I know kids get fussy. I got five kids. I can tell you right now, the, the sermon get lengthy, you know. I mean, just dragging out. Man, we're up here preaching. We're feeling better all the time. But I mean, them poor mamas are wrestling them babies around. But I mean, I've seen it before, you know. All of a sudden, I mean, there's, it's, you know, conviction. It's from God. God sends conviction. Amen. Those wise men came into Jerusalem. The Bible says that all Jerusalem was troubled. They was convicted. Herod was convicted in his heart. Amen. God give us a conscience. Amen. He can speak to us. The Bible says he was convicted, but he was not changed. Amen. You know, you, you, you read that story. Now y'all gonna start looking around when the kids start crying now. I shouldn't have said nothing about that. Don't pay no mind to that. Did you know that story where uh, they brought that woman to Jesus and said she was caught in the very act of adultery and said Moses' law commanded her to be stoned, you know, in John? Where Je- you know the scripture where Jesus said, take the, he that is without sin, cast the first stone at her. They brought that woman to Jesus caught in the very act. Well, you caught her. Come on now. How come you only brought one down here? I mean, she was caught in the very act of adultery. The Bible says, Jesus said, he that is without sin, let him cast the stone, first cast the stoner. You know what the Bible says? That they being convicted in their heart went out. One, I was reading this scripture. I got to think about why when they got convicted did they leave? Why did when they get convicted go to Jesus and say, forgive me? They knew they wouldn't have left if they didn't know it was real. Those men was convicted. How come they left if he wasn't really the son of God? Amen. The Bible says they was convicted in their heart. Well, if you got to, if you got to leave, why you got to leave? I'm just me. They knew he was the son of God. That's why they left. They said, he said, here, first one of you, here, catch this. He didn't throw no stone. He wrote on the ground. 
Amen. But y'all, you know, so to speak here, throw this stone. You ain't done nothing wrong. Throw the stone at her. Amen. He that is without sin first cast the stone at her. They being convicted in their heart from the eldest to the youngest, the oldest one there. Amen. The one with the most seniority, the, the one that had probably was a scribe or amen, a leader. He was convicted first. Amen. But why would they miss the opportunity of getting your sins under the blood? Why miss the opportunity? Don't just come to the house of God and get convicted but when the conviction comes God's a drawing. Amen sir, why don't you come down here while I'm writing on the ground. You can hear Jesus speaking almost. Amen, why don't you repent too. Amen, but instead of repenting they done what Herod did. They was troubled, they was convicted but it wasn't enough to change their life. We get convicted all the time. There can be nobody around. That Holy Ghost will convict you. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Bible says He convinces the world of sin. Well, I don't know this is sin. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Man, God in His Spirit will tell us. We'll know it's a sin. Somebody else will do it. I can't do that. Why? Because I've got a conviction. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to move on, but Acts chapter 2, that they was pricked in their heart. What does that mean, pricked in their heart? I'm talking about conviction. I mean, you know, we, we, can, we don't ever want to get away from conviction. It's a dangerous thing to get away from conviction. Where Holy Ghost conviction cannot, amen, deal with us about our sin. Amen. But the Bible said Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and they were pricked in their heart. Now I'm not talking about, you know, like somebody playing a joke on you or something, put a tack in their hand or something at school. They do that. You know, put a tack in their hand and shake your hand and ow, you know, hit that. Pricked. Amen. But I'm talking about a prick in our heart while Peter was preaching. Amen. And maybe somebody here today, hallelujah, it's the word of God. Amen. Pricked in their heart. The Bible said when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart but they didn't do what Herod did somebody say praise God they didn't do what those men did that Jesus said he that is without sin first cast the stone at her they didn't do that the Bible said they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles men and brethren what hallelujah shall we do that's the right answer right there hallelujah amen in the days of Herod the king these wise men came and they was convicted Herod was convicted. All Jerusalem was convicted. Amen. There's no doubt. There's no doubt that, it, and I know, amen, Bible scholars can, and commentators should say whatever, you know, and different things about it. I don't want to get into that. Amen. But there's no doubt that this was not just three men coming in carrying their gifts. You know, there's no doubt that those wise men was probably kings of, the, you know, a far country. The Bible said they came from afar off. Amen. The Bible said they came from afar Amen. That's not a fire that's far off, you know. But uh, for some of us uh, rednecks, you know, they came from afar. It says that there was firemen in the Bible. They came from afar. But anyways, Lord, help us today. Amen. It's something how God will draw people from way out there to be saved. Drug addicts, alcoholics, sinners, and bring them into the house of God. But all those men right there in Jerusalem had the biggest opportunity of all, but they never changed. They were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and the apostles, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Amen. God help us. Amen. Conviction. Amen. Is something from God. We must, amen, yield to conviction. Yield to Holy Ghost conviction. The Bible said in Psalms 32, God will convict us of sin. It said, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Amen. In whose spirit there is no guile. Listen to verse 3. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long. He said, I was under conviction. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. God was putting Holy Ghost conviction on him. My moisture is dirt turned into the drought of summer. Selah. Didn't even have no tears. I mean, you're talking about in pain and sorrow. 
and unrest. The Bible said the wicked are like a troubled sea which cast up dirt and mire. There is no rest, saith God, to the wicked. Then he said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Thank God for conviction. Amen. Herod was under conviction, but he died never worshiping the Lord. He died a wicked man. He died a murderer when he didn't have to die a murderer. Wait a minute, he murdered somebody. What do you mean he didn't have to die a murderer? God will forgive you. A murderer doesn't have to die a murderer. God will forgive. Amen, no matter what it is. Y'all with me this morning? Abortion is murder. But you don't have to die, amen, a murderer. Hallelujah. You don't have to die an adulterer. You don't have to die in sin. Amen. But Herod, the Bible says when Herod was dead, oh God, he died before Jesus' ministry ever began because he didn't respond to conviction. Why was he troubled? Because God was giving him a chance. When somebody's under conviction, it is God giving them an opportunity. You can't just come to God when you get ready. The Spirit has to draw you. Brother Stacy's dad passed away, and in the funeral the other day, there was Sister Shirley Lester was talking about how that he went out the back door. This is a powerful testimony. I hope I get it just right. He said she was preaching and said that he, he, was, he was lost years ago and said he, got, he was trying to go out the back door and leave during the altar call and said that the door jammed up on him. And she said, I was standing behind the pulpit pleading, don't go, don't leave. Jesus said he couldn't get the door open. Said he sat there and fiddled with it until he pulled the doorknob off in his hand trying to get out that church. And said he stuck that doorknob in there and she said, I watched him to, and, and forced that door open and went out. And, and he got saved years later and she, uh, and she told, she said that he told me, God never dealt with me for 16 years. For 16 years, he said, I never felt the tug of God one time. My God, there's a lot of things in life to go through that's horrible. But the worst thing is to never feel the presence of God. That's what's going to make hell so bad, folks, is there'll be no God there. And when there is no God, there is no peace. And when there is no God, there is no love. And when there is no God, there is no mercy. Amen. Herod was troubled. God was giving him a chance. If God puts somebody under conviction, it's the Spirit of God drawing them. There's a lot of people, they're not even under conviction. God's not drawing them. The whole world is lost. But God's not calling everybody just different places. He's sending where He's drawing. And God does take His hand off of people. And sometimes He'll take it off for a period in their life. Amen. I remember an individual. Amen. That used to come all to church all the time. Never sat, never prayed, never got saved, but would come constantly. And one, one service, this several years ago, um, I felt like the Lord dealt with me. I didn't say it, but I felt like the Lord dealt with me. This is the last time I will deal with this. I, this is the last time. Well, you know what I thought? I thought they was going to die. You know what I'm saying? That's, I mean, he said, God said, this is the last time I'll deal with them. I thought, well, they're going to die. But just because it's the last time God deals with a person doesn't mean they're going to die. He may never. He may I'm telling you, they was coming up. They was coming. They was coming. They were seeking the Lord. They was calling me. They was trying to get counselors, trying to get help in their life. They wanted to. But in this service, a decision was made. When they walked out the door this morning, we'll see you later. We'll see you, you know, see you next Sunday or see you, I don't remember, maybe see you tonight. I'm here to tell you, I felt the Spirit of God deal with me. This is the last time I'll ever deal with it. And I, I know, and I still know that person, but they have never darkened the door. Of a church since. Their homes busted up. They're, they're in a mess. 
Addicted, all kinds of things. Oh God, help us Lord. Amen. When we're under conviction, you've got to respond right then. Because God may not give another chance. Herod was troubled, but he wasn't changed. Amen. We can get troubled, we can get stirred. God, forgive me. God, help me. I feel like this morning there's somebody here that needs help. I wish I could preach better. Amen. There's somebody here that needs help from God, and God wants to help. That's that tug. That's that pull. That's that amen in our heart. Amen. That God's a deal and saying, I'll help you. I'll deliver you. I'll set you free. I'll change your life. I'll move for you. I'll heal you. I'll bring your family back into your life. I'll bring your children back home. I'll restore broken relationships, broken dreams, broken promises. Amen. I'll give you the real, real reason of Christmas. I'll do it. That's what Christmas is. Amen. This was the first Christmas. Amen. And Herod was convicted, but he wasn't changed. I believe that the Bible says he was troubled because of conviction. Amen. And if there was conviction, there was an opportunity. Do y'all believe that? God loves everybody. There's nobody he don't love. Every human being, amen, no matter race, color, or creed, or social status, or how much money they have or don't have, God loves that person. And everybody was made in the image and likeness of God. He loved Herod. And he convicted him, but he didn't change. He heard, he heard the testimony, he heard the word of God. Amen, those scribes and, 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 uh, the Bible said the chief priests and scribes, amen, he demanded them, where's Christ gonna be born? You know what they did? They went and rolled out a scroll and they looked through there. Amen, it might have been the first time Herod ever saw those, amen, blessed words. It might have been the first time he ever heard those blessed words. But you know, God gave him a chance. He heard the word of God. And you know, God, all he has to do is give us one chance that's all he has to do is give us one chance I thank God I'm testimony that he's gives, he gives more than one I thank God I'm a testimony that he gives us over and over and over amen but you know Amen. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 19 about the rich man that was in hell. Now I'm out of time this morning. The rich man that was in hell. Amen. And he said, send him to dip his finger in my tongue. Amen. For I'm tormented in this flame. And he said, there's a great gulf between me and you. And he, I cannot send him there. And in Luke chapter number 16, and the Bible tells us, uh, amen. He said, well, send him to my brothers. He said, no, they have Moses and the prophets. Uh, you know what that means in that story? Uh, Amen. What Abraham said is they have the Bible. The Moses and the prophets uh, was the, the word of God, the law. Uh, amen. Moses wrote a lot of the Old Testament. The prophets did. Uh, amen. He said, they got the Bible. Can you imagine people in hell saying, somebody go tell my brother or sister they're in Longview so they don't come to this place. Amen. And God said, they got the Bible. That's all they need. Brother Moore was by here not long ago. He was talking about Croatia and all. There's a, there's a man over there, Brother Kronichnik. Amen. Croatia, former Yugoslavia, you know. Catholic. All of them Catholics. And that's different than they are here. Amen. Some countries, it's totally different. I mean, they persecute Christians. And I mean, if you don't do it exactly like this, and... uh he got a Catholic Bible and got to reading it. He said, this ain't right. God began to deal with him. He got saved and born again. Hallelujah. Didn't even know that there's another person in the whole universe that believed like him. Hey Amen. But he got saved. He didn't just get saved. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. He kept reading his Bible. Herod heard the word. Where's Christ going to be born? Hallelujah. Where's he going to be born? He heard. He says he's going to be born right there. Amen. In Bethlehem. He called, he called those, um, he called, uh, those wise men and said, come in here. Come in here, boys. Come here. Come here. Come here. I got to ask y'all something. Amen. Nobody's in here. Nobody's in this room. Amen. Lock those doors. Y'all get out. All the guards out. Everybody. Come here. Come here. Hey. Where? When? Tell me about that star. 
You know why he did that? Because he really believed. There was something stirring his heart and he really believed. And he wanted to know. Amen. He wanted to know about that star. But he never got saved. He never say, I believe in God, do you? The Bible said the devils believe. They do more than believe. What does it say, Brother Wayne? They tremble. The devils believe and tremble. The devils are better than a lot of church folks. When it comes to the fear of God, when it comes to living right, when it comes to turning our back on sin, amen, and self and the flesh, God help us today. Sister Bethany's going to play. She's on the piano this morning. Hey, man, I want you to notice these verses right here, and you tell me that Herod didn't really know this was real. When they came, said, where is he as king of the Jews? When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. Number one. Number four, when he, he who, Herod, he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded. Number two, he, Herod, together and demanded where Christ should be born. They said in Bethlehem. Verse number seven, then Herod, when he had privately caused the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Number three, he believed. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go search diligently and bring me word again. Number 16, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, he was exceeding wrath and sent forth and slew all the children. There's at least four reasons that the Bible tells us Herod knew it was real. Herod really believed it, but he didn't change. I see people, they know it's real. They know old time salvation is real. They know the Holy Ghost power is real. But it's not enough to change them. It's not enough to affect their life. Stand together with me this morning. I'd like to ask the church just to pray silently right here for me. I'd like for you to pray that the Lord would help you right here. On this Sunday morning, at a couple minutes past 12, before I let you go, while every head's bowed and every eye closed this morning, no one looking around, you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I need help from God in my life. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not here to... I wouldn't do that for nothing. I'm not here to make you feel bad. You say, Pastor, I need help from God this morning. I know God's real, but I'm not changed. Pastor, I'm under conviction about my sin this morning. I've been living wrong. I've been living... I ain't been doing right. I'd like to get right with God this morning. You're here this morning. The Lord's put you under conviction. Right here on this Christmas Sunday, 2016. Would you just slip your hand up and slip it down, son? Yes, I see those hands. God knows your need. Yes, sir. I see your hand. Anyone else to say, I need to get right with God. I need help from God in my life. I need a touch from the Lord. I need God in my life. I don't want to be like Herod. It says, and when Herod was dead. And when Herod was dead. How long did he live? He didn't live long enough to hear Jesus preach. How long will you live? You may not live long enough to pray. Say, I'll pray next year. I'll pray next year. Oh, don't wait. Don't wait. In everything don't wait. I do, I need Oh, I'm saved. I'm right. Oh, God help us. If you live Friend, the Lord wants to save you this morning. God may not deal with you for a long time and say, well, I'll be back to church next Sunday. I'll go to church next Sunday. I went last Sunday. What if God doesn't give you the heart? What if God doesn't give you the desire? You may not be in the casket. You may not be in the grave. You may. God's dealing with you this morning. You're under conviction. Why was the wicked king under conviction? Because God loved him just like he loved you. He says, I'll forgive all sins. Herod, you don't have to die. Herod, you don't have to die in adultery. Herod, you don't have to die, wicked man. You're here this morning. I'm going to open these altars. I want to pray with you. I'd like to pray with you this morning. I'd like to pray for you.
And I'm coming to me. I can't save you, but I like to pray with you. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're rich or you're poor, you need help too. I need Jesus this morning. Oh, I need the Lord. I need it well. Somebody else this morning. And I thought I Somebody needed Somebody else this morning. Today. You need the Lord in your life this morning. But I could you're not, not be satisfied. Sir, ma'am, you're not right with God this morning. With the Lord. I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about getting baptized. I'm talking about the real I need thing. That real conviction. So why don't you come to the Lord this morning? Let the Lord change your life. Why don't you walk down this aisle? Pray one more time. Need was met my greatest need was the Lord. My greatest need is Jesus.